Well, there's always excitement when the dyes come to town, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, we always have some kind of dramatic story uh, to tell um, on our way here uh, to back to the States this summer. Um, last week, uh, the plane that we were supposed to be on, the flight we were supposed to be on, actually crash landed in Miami. I don't know if you saw that in the news. Yeah, we were supposed to be on that red air uh, flight. We actually uh, were, we actually had the, the, the tickets for that one. So, but my wife changed it at the last minute because uh, some logistics, we wanted to get back, make it all the way to Cincinnati the same day. So we got on the two hour earlier flight and which was the last flight of that airlines that made it safely there. So, but we were the, we got first front, front first front front rows. I can't even say this front row seat to see that um, little incident happen in Miami. Nobody, I understand, nobody died, uh, which is great. Um, most of them were just Venezuelans. There was a flight from Venezuela. I actually, made connections in Dominican. But yeah, there's always something dramatic, right? When we're when I'm flying or something, you know, I always have these cool stories, right? So. Uh, but we're excited to be back. This week's been uh, really fun, fun m- making new friends here at church, new amigos, right? Meeting all the kids. Uh, I knew that most of the adults, but I didn't know a lot of the kids. So this week was amazing. And if you, th- I, I know a lot of the adults got to participate. If you didn't, if you didn't participate, you need to sign up for next year because that was amazing. You know, I was, uh, I got really attached to the kids this week, and. Uh, I was a little disappointed yesterday because we didn't have VBS yesterday. So I was like, I didn't know what to do with my time yesterday. I was like, should I go to, you know, uh, I was ready to come here and uh, hang out with the kids again one more day. I'm sure the kids also were like, this is so weird. We don't have VBS, right? So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, we had so much fun with the kids and, uh, and uh, we got really attached. One of the, one of the little girls, um, she was here all week and then on Thursday, she started crying. And I was like, uh, we still got one more day, you know, <laughs> don't start crying now. And, uh, and she's like, no, at, tomorrow I have to go to the dentist, so I won't be able to come to VBS, so this is my last day. And she was bawling, and she, we were handing out Venezuelan souvenirs to the kids, and um, she was worried she wasn't going to get her last souvenir the last day. So we went ahead and gave it to her. And then something cool happened. She actually made it on Friday, so that was kind of cool. <laughs> Um, somehow she's, I don't know if she got her dentist appointment moved up or something, but, but yeah, that was, the kids were just, uh, we got really attached. The girl was crying, but I, inside of me, I was crying too. So I was like a little kid, uh, again. Uh, so that was kind of weird. Uh, but two things I learned, uh, this week, two things I learned from BBS. I mean, I mean, the kids learned a lot of stuff. I mean, watching that video, I'm so jealous because, I, got, I only stayed in one station the whole time, the mission station. But I didn't know all that cool stuff was happening, all the other ones. I mean, I wanted to go to the games after watching all that stuff, you know. Uh, but, yeah, there was some really cool stuff happening. I mean, there's no way to just, ex- I mean, you have to be a kid to experience all the stations. So I guess none of the adults actually did that. But, um, but it, it just ama- it amazes me. Two things I learned is that God's attached to us the same way uh, <laughs> that those kids got attached to and how we got to touch to the kids. I mean, uh, I can just see God getting sad just to the idea of us not coming to see him one of the days, you know, not coming to his presence. And, and that's how it was with the kids. They were just sad if they weren't going to make it one of the days. And uh, so I see God that way, you know, and, and it just, it makes me want to spend time with him, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you have to be here and under, you had to be here this week to understand that. But the other thing I, know, I, I noticed is that we need to be more like kids, right? <laughs> you know, they're so uh, wild and spontaneous sometimes, but there's some amazing things about these kids and just kids in general, you know, just the passion they have for stuff. I mean, getting up here and singing, you know, uh, what was that one song you sang today about the breath? Uh, it's, the, it's your breath in our lungs. And so that's why we pour out our praise I mean, if you really think about that, I mean, if it's God's breath in your lungs, I mean, how can you not praise him? But yet, as adults, we kind of forget that, and, uh, and uh, it's so much harder sometimes to praise God, and, uh, but the kids were passionate. I mean, every day they were singing, they were jumping, they were screaming, they were, you know, they were involved. They were just incredible, and, and they, 
the offering that the kids uh, you know, pulled off, it was amazing. They didn't tell you what the goal was. They just told you how much. The goal was only 1000 so they tripled that. So that's, that's amazing what the kids can do, you know, when they get their minds to it. And, um, and just their, how passionate they are. It's just amazing. I think we as adults can learn a lot from that, you know. We need to be more like kids. You know, you remember, uh, you know how adults are like, we're, we're more mature with our, with our logic and stuff like that. But I think kids are more mature with their faith, you know. <laughs> Because they don't need to see. They don't need all the evidence. They don't need all that logic. I mean, they just believe, you know? They just love. And, and that, that's incredible. You know, there's a story in the Bible, you know, about this one of the disciples named Thomas. And at the resurrection uh, of Jesus, he wasn't there when he first appeared to his disciples. And, and the disciples went to tell, tell the other disciples about Jesus being resurrected. And, and he's like, ah, no, nah, I don't believe it. I was like, you don't believe Peter? Come on. John, you don't believe them? They're telling you he resurrected. We saw him. Yeah, I don't believe it. <laughs> These are one of the disciples. And then, uh, so Jesus had to appear to him the next time. And, and, uh, and it just, he had to show him that, you know, touch me. This is me. But, you know, that's incredible that, that adults are so hard to, to believe sometimes. And, uh, and, but Jesus' words were, you know, blessed, you know, bless you that saw me and believed, but blessed are those that are not, okay, they won't get to see me resurrected, and yet they will believe. And that's much of us right now and 2,000 years later. So, uh, so that, that's amazing. Kids are like that, you know, they don't, they don't need to see that sometimes, they just believe. And I, I'm a little jealous of that, right? We should be. And um, Jesus always said, you know, let the, let the kids come to me. Because the adults are like, keep the kids away from Jesus, you know. And, uh, but there were, he's like, let the kids come to me. Because the kingdom of heaven is like, like those, you know, like kids, for those that are like kids. And I, I can just imagine Jesus hanging out with the kids, you know. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't like hard for him to hang out with the kids. Because he knows the faith and he knows you know, the passion these kids have. And he's like, man, you guys should leave them here. You guys should just learn some things from these kids. So kids, learn, teach your parents a little bit about VBS. So we got, I, I don't know if the kids like came home and did these weird skits with you guys. I taught them all these uh, interesting ways to share the gospel. And maybe some of them practiced them with you or not. But <laughs> ask them about them and see if they remember some of those skits that we did that were really funny. But uh so today I'm going uh, to talk about, I'm going to make a sermon really simple. I'm going to talk about, the uh, title of the sermon is BFF, right? And do kids know what that means? Because they had to teach me what that means. My kids had to teach me, and, and the, the lingo changes all the time, right? So I never know what's, the, what's, in, what's in and what's out. But uh, my daughters had to tell me, uh, define what BFF was, and it's like, best friends forever, you know, so I made some, good, some best friends this week, right? But um, I, li- I like that term, you know, people use it, and then they have these little necklaces and stuff like that, and you give half of the necklace to your best friend, and I don't know what all that, but uh, we're going to talk about best friends forever, but Jesus kind of redefined that. He redefined that term. I think he, he really, like, invented the term, because, I mean, in John 15, and we're going we're gonna to get to there right now in a second, but... Jesus says that uh, there is no better friend that one, uh, uh, that one that gives his life for, for his friend. There's no greater love than that. Giving your life for your friend. I mean, that's friendship redefined right there, right? Going all in, you know, loving somebody, like even giving their life for their friends. That's amazing. And, uh, but then he says he, he redefined life because before Jesus' time, that people thought that this life was... The, all there was, and then he's like, no, there's eternal life, and then they, we start thinking about there's going to be an everlasting life. So only, only Jesus can really give us that best friends forever idea, you know, because here on earth, it's just best friends until I die, right, or something like that, but Jesus can tell you best friends forever, but in order for that to happen, we have to be in Christ. We have to be one of 
his disciples, you know. So Jesus redefined that, but I'm going to even redefine that a little bit more uh, today, just for the sake of the sermon. So BFF for us will be bring your friends to faith, okay? <laughs> bring your friends to faith. And I don't, know, uh, I don't know if they did it here, because I wasn't in all the stations, but VBS, when we used to do VBS back in the days, you got points if you brought your friends to VBS, yeah? Uh, did they do that this year or no? Are you, okay. Maybe that's not a thing that nowadays, you know? <laughs> Maybe it's harder to bring your friends to, to, to BBF. B, VBS, okay. <laughs> but uh, in our days, yeah, you got points. So you'd start bringing people and you'd fight over your friends because, you know, some of them shared the same friends. No, that's my friend. No, he's mine. And you're, you're yanking him. You have to give half a point to one and half a point to the other. It's like Solomon. You're cutting these kids in half. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but, but yeah, that, that was, I, that's the idea. And uh, actually, we, we taught the kids that in missions this week is like, hey, the, the reason we do missions, the reason we're doing this is we want to bring others to Christ. We're going to bring friends to Christ. So there's three things about bringing friends to Christ that you need to do. First of all, you need to bring yourself to Christ. Right? If you're not a friend of Christ yet, Jesus, you, you make that step, right? Bring, your friend, bring yourself to Christ and, uh, because there is no better friend, right? I mean, and we're going to find out a little bit more about that today, but um, there is no better friend than that. I brought my Bible, but it's actually in Spanish, so I was going to, if I read something, you probably wouldn't understand much here, but <laughs> I got, I'm going to go ahead and read something. John 15, 9, verse 9. I'll just do verse 9 in Spanish and translate it for you. Unless somebody wants to loan me their Bible in English. <laughs> BFF. Okay, so uh, uh, John 15, verses 9, says this. These letters are so little, too. These are the ones we hand out free, so they made them, like, tiny in Venezuela. So this, the verse says, I see. I see. <laughs> it says, I see. Actually, that's what it says. Así como el Padre me ha amado a mí, también yo los amo a ustedes. Permanezcan en mi amor. You guys recognize any words there? Amor, maybe? Yeah? What's amor? Love. Yeah, you guys learned that in all the languages, right? So, uh, so the, the verse says, just like the Father loves me, I love you guys. That's, that's what a real friend's all about. You know, Jesus is telling his disciples, this is the last day. This is going to be the day Jesus gets arrested. He gets crucified the next day. So he's like, just the, the fathers love me. I love you guys. Remain in that love. And then the next verse, he says, go ahead, love one another. Love other people. And then he explains what love is. And he says, love is this, you know, it's like a friend. Somebody gives their life for their friend. There's no greater love than that. Explaining what he's going to do. Right? So uh, he's like, I don't call you servants anymore. I call you friends. And, and Jesus is the one that started this whole BFF thing. So uh, so we need to be like his. I mean, this, this sermon is about that. Bring yourself to Jesus. Be, let him be your best friend. Bring others to Jesus. And then... Bring your friends to Jesus, I'm sorry, and then bring strangers to Jesus, which is kind of weird for kids. Like, stay away from strangers, right? <laughs> but as an adult, as you grow up, you know, then our goal is just not just to bring our friends to Jesus, it's bring strangers to Jesus. Bring others, the ones that are farther away. You know, because it's easy to maybe bring friends, but it's a little bit harder to bring strangers to Jesus and to faith, which is actually the F, right? But so I'm going to, really the part of the sermon that you need to learn today is how to do this. And as the years I've worked in Venezuela for many years, I kind of found out some things that work and some things that don't work. So I'm going to give you, these are not like the, maybe not all these are in the Bible and maybe some apply to our culture in Venezuela and not to this culture or whatever. But I want to tell you the things that works, that works for me when we try to reach others to Jesus. Just uh, before I go into that story, just last, um, last week, two weeks ago, a week before we came here, uh, we had uh, a girl get baptized in a church. Her, her name's Tiffany, and uh, she's um, 18 years old, and she's, she's Julia's friend. And uh, she, Julia met her in soccer, 
uh, where she plays, and all the friends there, none of them know Jesus. And, uh, and for many years, Julia's been able to bring some friends to Christ, you know. And this year was kind of frustrating because none of our friends are, you know, were coming to Christ or coming to church or anything. And finally, finally, this last uh, few weeks, Tiffany started coming to the church, and, um, and uh, she, she decided she wanted to be baptized the week before we left. And uh, so that was amazing to be able to baptize uh, this girl named Tiffany. And uh, the funny thing about Tiffany is that as Julia was thinking about her, you know, of all her friends that she was trying to, to bring to Christ, you know, bring to faith, she was probably not on the top of the list. You know, she's like maybe not the nicest girl or the, you know, the girl that seems like more interested in, the, in God or the Bible and stuff like that. But she's the one that ended up coming to church, which is weird. Sometimes, like, we have this idea of who we could talk to, but then the people we least expect are the ones that sometimes come to Jesus. So we, sometimes we think strangers. So we're not talking to strangers about Jesus, you know. Uh, that's like, that's not going to happen. That's not going to do any good. And then sometimes those are more responsive than, than your friends or your family, you know. So that's something we, we need to learn. So uh, let's go. Let's, I'm trying to, I was reading Psalms this month, so I'm all about acrostics this week, this month, you know, Psalms, there's a lot of acrostics in Psalms. So we're going to work with the BFF, FFF, and we have some Fs here, but um, BFFs, we just put the little S at the end there. But the first uh, thing that we need to do, how, how to evangelize, how to be effective to bring uh, your friends to faith. First thing you want to do is be bold. How about that one? I think that's one of the hardest parts for us. And I'll give you an example of this uh, in Mark chapter 2, verse 1. It, it gives us like a, a good example of people that were really bold about bringing their friends to Jesus. It's, it's, I think it's, one of the, it's the first story uh, in the ministry of Jesus according to Mark. And, um, and it's the story about these friends. They had a paralytic uh, friend that was sick, couldn't walk. And he said, man, I heard that Jesus heals people. I need to take my friend to get healed. I need to take my buddy to Jesus. And that's easier said than done. This guy couldn't walk. So you, that, they literally had to carry him to Jesus, right? So they're on the way to Jesus. They heard Jesus was in Capernaum, which uh, according to Luke, he, this is his new home. He moved from Nazareth to Capernaum to be in this area where all the towns were at, and he can do his ministry. So he moved from Nazareth to Capernaum. So he's from this area now. And Mark tells us that he was in his house when this story happens. Jesus was in his new home, maybe, right? temporary home, whatever he used there, rented home, apartment, whatever. He was over there at his place. And the place was crowded. Everybody wanted to be close to Jesus. This is amazing. They're all, they're all get gathered. There's so many people. Obviously, uh, they didn't, like, there was no, like, rest, fire hazard restriction back there, whatever. There's no way in and out. I mean, it was completely crowded place. No one else could fit. But listen to this. These, these friends were bold. I mean, like, we're, we're going to take our friend to Jesus and the friend's probably thinking, just forget it. There's no way, you know, this is kind of uncomfortable. You guys carry me everywhere. You know, there's a big line to see Jesus. There's no way we're getting in. And the, and the friends are like, hang on, man. We're, we're not giving up. We're, I mean, we're just going to be bold about this, and we're going to do it. And they decided to climb up to the roof of the house. I don't, I don't know how that worked back then. If there's a stairways or a tree to get up to the roof. They get up to the roof, and they decide we're going to make a hole in the roof. This is Jesus' house, right? They're breaking down Jesus' house, as, I, as far as I understand it here. And they're tearing a hole in his house to get his friend to Jesus so that Jesus could save him, so that Jesus could heal him. Isn't that amazing? So Jesus is preaching like I'm here, and all of a sudden there's this, all this racketing going on, there, all that noise and dust falling and, you know, you don't want to look up because you'll probably get some of that in your eyes. It always happens to me when I'm changing a light bulb or anything. It's like, I don't know how I do, do it, but I always get stuff in my eyes. And, uh, and Jesus looks up, and here comes 
this man, paralytic man, just they're lowering him down to Jesus. And Jesus is going to heal him immediately. And you know what? The first words uh, Jesus say, says to this man, it's not like, what did you do to my roof? Or, you know, that would be us, you know? The first thing Jesus sees is not a hole in his roof. No? What he sees is the faithfulness of these friends, and he sees this hurting person, which he wants to be friends with. And he wants to bring to life. So he forgot about the roof, you know? How, how many of you would be more worried about the roof? This is a new house. Don't scratch anything. Don't, you know, I was helping uh, somebody move in the other day. They're not here, so don't, don't tell them this, you know. And they were buying, they bought some new, we're staying at uh, our friend, uh, friend's house. Um, <laughs> and she was nice enough to buy some little night tables because they're, she's refurnishing some things. And uh, so we went and got the night table and helping them move in. And uh, I was like, I'll carry two at the same time, you know. And, uh, you know, trying to be strong and everything, showing off. I don't know. And, uh, and uh, I just go on like, oh, this ain't that heavy, you know. And then I whack, whack the, the, the night table against one of the walls on the, around the corner. And I was like, oh, I hope that didn't leave a scratch or anything. So we put the table down. And, yep, there was a big, <laughs> the new furniture, there was a big crack on the edge right, in, right where, where you go in. So I left my mark already on that on that house. And, um, but Jesus wasn't worried about any of that stuff, you know. He wasn't thinking, oh, I hope they didn't, you know, who's going to pay for that if this is a rented house? He's just thinking about saving that guy, and he's impressed with the friendship and the, the boldness of these other people. So, so what's keeping us from bringing our friends to faith, right, and to Jesus? Are we embarrassed? Oh, what's Jesus going to think? You know, there's too many people. It's not the right time. It's not the right moment. I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to, you know, politically correct. What if I say the wrong words and they get offended? They don't talk to me, whatever. You know, they, they weren't thinking about any of that stuff. They just worried about the important stuff. They were just bold. So there we go. So BFF, right? The first thing you need to do to, to reach other pe people, you got to be bold. I mean, if you're not bold, you're not going to reach anybody. You got to, you got to take a step of faith. You know, tear down, wreck some houses. You know, whatever, <laughs> ruin some furniture. I don't know, but um, you got to do that. And uh, I'll give you an example because I, I just got here last week, and I'm I'm always confronted with what I preach. I have to practice it because I can't just come here and tell you something and not do it. So uh, last week I met this guy. Uh, in Cincinnati after, after service here, and uh, we were having lunch with this family, and they brought a Venezuelan, actually, uh, that was visiting, <coughs> sorry, visiting the States, and, uh, and, they had, and the, this guy had lunch with them. I don't even remember his name, honestly. I mean, I'm, I feel really bad about this, because I preached to him for almost an hour, and I don't remember his name, but this is how bold we have to be sometimes. Of course, first, I offered them coffee. We had lunch together and all that stuff. But, but I, didn't, I didn't waste the time because I don't know when I'm seeing this guy again. So we started talking about faith. And we ended up, he went through the whole gospel in about an hour, you know, telling him about Jesus. And it's the first time somebody explained it that way to him. I mean, he comes from a Catholic background, but he, he doesn't practice his faith. He doesn't know much about the Bible. And um, he doesn't go to church. But he got the gospel story. And if the kids know how, to, how I do skits and illustrations, they know how I talk to this guy, right? You guys have some idea. Maybe the little paper, you know, making the little cross, ripping up the papers. The kids know how to do it now, so they're going to be experts when they grow up. So uh, be bold is the key. I mean, I could have just not done anything, it's, but it's a lot simpler. And that's what we usually choose to do is nothing, you know, but... Sometimes we have to be bold and share the faith with somebody. And then let God, you know, you can't really bring anybody to Christ. You kind of show them where it's at and then let the rest, of, let him take the last few steps, right? You can't do that, you can't do that for them. So uh, be bold. And uh, the kids got some money this week from Venezuela, right? 
Remember that, kids? And on the back of the money, what was on the back of the money on each bill? There's animals on the back of the, the bills. So who said that? Raise your hand. Good job, buddy. So, hey, uh, each day they had a different animal. Each bill has a different animal. It's really cool. Uh, and the bills are really colorful. They have different colors, all of them. So we were, like, trying to find a mysterious animal each way. So today with the sermon, this will help you remember, kids, the first one of the animals that we saw on the back of the bill was an eagle, right? There was an eagle on the back of one of them. And uh, it wasn't a bald eagle, but we can say it's a bold eagle, right? <laughs> so be bold. Remember the eagle. And uh, this is really bad. I mean, I, maybe for a second sermon, I'm not going to use these. <laughs> but uh, okay, so you'll remember that. Uh, second thing you want to do with the F is uh, BF is be friendly. Because people, I've seen people be bold. I see it in Venezuela, people evangelizing. They're like preaching the gospel and yelling at people, telling them that they have to repent and, you know, or they're going to go to hell and all that kind of stuff. And that usually just turns people away, right? And you guys probably heard it. Somebody's probably preached to you that way. And you're like, what, a, what in the world? This is not like what the Bible tells us to do. You know, because if, if we read the chapter today in John 15, he's talking about love and loving one another. And sometimes when we're bold, we forget the love part, right? So, so we have to be not just bold. We got to be really friendly with people, okay? And I, I've noticed is that opens up a lot of doors. In, in Venezuela, the culture is very different than here. People are extremely friendly. I mean, extremely friendly, so just to give you an, an example, they will say hi to you with a kiss. So on the cheek, thank goodness. But, <laughs> but, you know, that's how it is. I mean, you go say hi, you give a kiss to the other person. Usually only guys to girls or girls to girls, but no guys to guys. So we don't do that one. We just hug or something like that. That's as far as we go. But, yeah, they're really friendly. I mean, and even if they just met you today. Maybe they won't give you a kiss to say hi, but they'll say, give you a kiss to say goodbye. So this is how the culture is. People are very friendly. And I mean, obviously in America, you don't do that, right? We have to keep our distance. And uh, sometimes we keep too much distance from the people, right? Sometimes we keep so much distance that we don't even make eye contact with people. We, we have this theory in our head that if we didn't make eye contact with the person, right? then they don't know we're there, then we don't have to say hi to them. Have you, have you, have you done that? Like, yeah, I just, I know they're there, but I'm just going to look forward, not look to the side, and that way I don't have to say hi. To, I can pretend I didn't see them. And it's a good excuse. It doesn't work in Venezuela. You pull that thing off, and they'll, like, make sure. My mother-in-law, which I shouldn't be talking about, but uh, <laughs> she's a great person, but... She's one of those people that if you come to her house to visit and you do not say like hi to her with a kiss or a hug, you know, you're not there yet. I mean, you're not present. And she will take exactly about 30 seconds to remind you that you haven't said hi to her yet. She will make sure you say, where's my hi? Where's my kiss? Where's my, you know, you haven't said hi to me. It's like, yes, I said hi to everybody when I walked there. It's like, hi. No, that doesn't count in Venezuela. You know, for some people more than others. But, but yeah, you have to literally go and say hi to everybody or goodbye or acknowledge them. How many of you guys do that all the time? <laughs> it's just my daughter's like, uh, my grandpa trained me. <laughs> yeah, we don't do that. We actually try to avoid that. Like if we don't make contact, we don't have to commit. We don't have to, you know, uh, spend time. We don't have to talk. I mean, Andy's, every time he comes to see me, visit me, he, he brought, he came over to visit me for a few minutes yesterday. He probably thought it was going to be like, uh, I'm just going to go in there, drop something off, and leave. How many minutes was it, Andy? I mean, it was like 20 minutes, and he's just there to drop something off. We're just talking, you know. And uh, it's kind of that rubbed off on me in that culture. But you have to be friendly. Before you evangelize somebody and stuff, you need to be friends with them. You know, that, that like breaks the ice. But you're not going to be friends with them if you don't even see them. 
You know, if you're avoiding them in the halls at school, even at church, have you seen new people come to church? Yeah? I mean, most of us like go out of, go out of our way to avoid them. <laughs> That's weird. It shouldn't be that way. We need to make eye contact. We need to go and talk to them. We need to be friendly. We're not going to reach anybody in the world unless we learn how to be friendly. And this is not easy for this culture, maybe. I mean, I'm not saying that Americans are not friendly. Don't get me wrong. They can be very friendly. You guys are very friendly. But it's so easy to, to avoid that, right? So don't think you're going to evangelize anybody if you're not friendly. So work on that first, you know? Don't work on the boldness first. Work on being friendly. That will open a ton of doors for you to later be bold. And uh, next F on my BFFFS, you know, you guys are wondering how many Fs there are going to be. But, uh, but the next one is just really a quick one. <laughs> There's some pun intended here. Oh, so be friendly like a dolphin. Kids, remember there was dolphins in the back? Dolphins are really friendly, right? They will come up to you when you're swimming and, and you're in a boat or whatever, and they'll swim with you. They train them, and they will come up and kiss you. When you, if you go to one of these places, you know, they'll help you swim. They'll push you out, out of the water. These, you know, dolphins are friendly. So be friendly like a dolphin. Remember that, kids, okay? I'm going to ask you this. If you want more money in Venezuelan money, you're going to have to know all these terms. So next one is just be be first and be fast. What in the world? I'm just looking for Fs, right? No. No, seriously. We always expect the people in the world, a stranger, whatever, to come to us. We're always expecting them to take the first step. You know? But we are the missionaries, right? Every one of us. We're the ones that are supposed to go to them, you know? They're not going to come to a different culture, you know, to a spiritual world or whatever. We need to go to them. We have to do it, take the first step. And there's so many points, sub points on this one. But we just need to be first and we need to be fast, you know, with this. Not wait, you know. Be the first one to, to welcome somebody, a new person at church, you know. Don't wait for them to come and present. How many of you guys are just like, uh, they, you know that your neighbors know that you are a Christian, so you're waiting for them to like ask you, like, uh, tell me about your faith or tell me about your church. You're like waiting because you because you have the fish on the back of your car, right? You have a sign on the front, you know, God bless or whatever, you know. So you're waiting. So like I posted something on the internet, so you're waiting for them to ask you, right? That's how we we do it usually. You know, but no, we're waiting for them to take the first step. The first step is hard, right? But you're, you need to be the one to take the first step to go get your friends, okay? Or to the strangers. You need to be the first one to go. It's not, and it's so easy to not do this, you know? Um, we're so always expecting people to ask us, hey, tell me about your faith. I mean, in, in, I play soccer too with a bunch of non-Christian people and, uh, and I made, it, I made it clear right from the beginning, I'm a pastor. You know, I don't have to hide that. I'm a pastor. But, that, but that's an excuse for me because now I said I'm a pastor. So if you want to know about Jesus, you need to come to me. You know? If you have problems, you need to come to me. So now I have the excuse that I already told you, you know, if you ever go, if you die and don't go to heaven, don't be blaming, and blaming it on me. I told you I was a pastor. You knew I was about, you guys joked about that, it's, which they always do. You know, they always have some kind of funny joke. Like um, one of the jokes is my brother-in-law also is a pastor. He plays on the team too. So when I come to the stage, they're all joke to him. He's like, oh, you better watch out. He's going to manage the money at the church now, so stuff like that. So, uh, <laughs> so sometimes the jokes are not very funny, but, but there's always jokes around, that, especially for us, but... But it's not, you can't expect them to say, okay, uh, it's your responsibility now because I already told you I was a pastor. You have to come to me. You can't expect that. You still need to go to them. It's not enough to put the fish on the back of your car. 
or the sign in the house or the t-shirt. I saw some really cool, I've seen already some really cool t-shirts around the city about people's faith. You know, but we do that. We just like, it's just easier. Just wear the t-shirt. I had the Venezuelan t-shirt on all week. One of the kids said, did you wash that? Like, are you washing it every day? I was like, in Venezuela, we don't have water. We're used to not washing them. I'm not going to answer that question, but yeah. <laughs> just imagine I did. Uh, but I was wearing it, and I was uh, in a public place the other day, and somebody came up to us and said, Venezuela! And I was like, because it said Venezuela. They recognized the flag and everything. And immediately, I noticed it was other Venezuelans, because Venezuelans are friendly. I told you about this, right? And uh, immediately, in about the conversation only lasted about 10 seconds, but I found out what city they're from, what they're doing here, and everything. As we were just walking by, we're like talking, and you know, I'm surprised they didn't kiss me. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, but sometimes it works if you're Venezuelan, but just wearing a t-shirt is not enough. People are not necessarily going to ask you about your faith and everything like that. So, so be first, be fast. You know, the first impression is, is a big thing. People come to church and their first impression will decide usually whether they'll come back or not. So if the first impression was you walked by them and you didn't make eye contact with them, you know, <laughs> you need to <laughs> redefine what it is, what's the BFF, right? So uh, we'll move on to the next F, today's F. <laughs> okay, did I say what the first, the, oh, the animal. What's the animal, kids, for being first and fast? What's the animal that we learned about? This is a tricky one because it's the opposite. <laughs> What animal did we learn about in Venezuela? They w sloth. Yes, we had a video of a sloth. You have these sloths that like to cross the street in Venezuela. In the traffic, you can imagine. It, it, you could be there all day waiting for them to cross. So people usually get out of the car and they have to carry these sloths. They have these big claws, you know, but they're so slow they can't really hurt you, you know. And they take them to the other side. But they're all furry and, you know, not like the nice kind of furry. It's like a chewbacca, you know, <laughs> messed up kind of hair thing going. Uh, kind of my hair, hairstyle this week, uh, BBS. But why are we talking about this? Oh, okay. The, uh, so first, <laughs> kids, be first. Be fast, you know. Uh, be fast to talk to people about Jesus. Here. Don't wait like two years. Oh, I didn't even know you were Christians. I've known you for two years. Like, what? You know, that should never happen. Okay? So don't be like a sloth. Don't be slow like a sloth. Be first. Be fast. Next one, I think we're on number four, is be funny. Be funny. Be fun. Okay? Kids don't like a boring teacher, right? Oh, well, kids like fun, fun teachers. And uh, people like to hang out with fun people, you know? How many of you guys like to hang out with people that are just, like, grumpy all the time? I mean, most of the kids you saw, them, they're all, like, smiled and laughing the whole time. You're like, you want to hang out with those kids. Then there's one, one in a, once in a while, there's one kid, he came in the whole time, and you're like, eh, he's, he just had a bad day or just woke up or something. But most of the kids are just happy and, and fun. You want to be around them. And that's the same thing as you grow up. That doesn't grow out of your system, you know? You still want to be around the fun people, around the funny people. <laughs> there was a skit we did with the kids. I don't know if you guys, the kids remember it. Remember the skit about people being contagious and grabbing all these sicknesses? Uh, remember that skit, kids? Yeah? Yeah, she does. So um, the kids actually participated in this. And we gave each kid like a different sickness that he had to do, you know? One of them was like they were sneezing, other ones were coughing, other ones were just uh, one of these kids they gave them was that they had this laugh attack. They couldn't stop laughing. That was their sickness. And they came and it was contagious and they gave it to me. And then we were laughing like crazy on stage. And uh, uh, the funny thing is that that's not a sickness. That's not, that's not something bad. That's something good. I don't know why we, do, we did the laughing one. It's just other than it was funny. You know? <laughs> But it's not a bad thing to laugh. 
you know? There's a, I like the skit guys. I understand there's going to be a movie they're going to show. I don't know if it's with the teens or something coming up. I heard about it. I was invited here at church. And um, at some point, find out when, when that is or whatever. You don't want to miss it. But the skit guys are these couple guys that do skits on YouTube, Facebook, whatever. And uh, they're really funny. And one of their shirts, they say, that they're, they're, one of their theme is laugh more. It's like that. Just You need to laugh more in life. And let me tell you, if you're going to evangelize a stranger and you want to be friendly, being funny is, is, is always, and being fun is always a great way to be friendly, you know, with people. You know, sometimes you're the, the joke, like with my friends in soccer, I let them joke about it because they're actually thinking about my faith and they're actually thinking about what it is to be a pastor. So they have to be created to say some jokes about me, Right? And, uh, but actually, that breaks down barriers. You know, people like to hang out with people that are fun and funny. Jesus, why did the kids want to hang out with Jesus? Anybody know? His sermons were really good? <laughs> Somebody slaps you in the face, turn you on the cheek, and I don't know. The kid, I mean, maybe the kids like that part. I don't know. But, uh, but the kids want to hang out with Jesus because he was fun. I mean, I can imagine, I mean, after VBS this week, I imagine what it was like when these kids came to Jesus and the disciples trying to get him away from them. Some of the teachers were trying to help me. You know, last day I got mobbed by all these, the younger kids, like the kindergarten, I think it was. They're jumping at me, they're hanging, they're choking me, you know. I don't know, we, why, I don't know if that picture didn't make it up to the, on the screen. Why did they put the ones with my bad ball skills, you know, the soccer skills, you know, but... That was amazing. I mean, just kids just want to hang out. You know, I, I can see Jesus just like kids crawling and jumping on him and him playing with them. The last few days, I would sit down here on this first step, you know. And the kids used, the first few days, they were like way back there. You know, by the end of the week, there were some girls, I don't know if it was you or was some other ones. They would come up right to the front. Like literally, they were like right here for the lesson time and I need to okay back off a little bit but they were like in my face and uh, kids love it I mean it sounds reminds us of the story of what Mary and Martha I remember Martha's working in the kitchen but Mary was there at the feet of Jesus but the kids were like that with Jesus Jesus was fun to be around they wanted to be around Jesus so animals okay kids on the back of one of the bills there was an armadillo you guys remember that one? And I don't know if they're all the armadillos are the same, but they're funny because they like can, they can turn into a little ball and, like, and they disappear, right? I don't know if all of them do that or not, but they are funny. So be funny like an armadillo, kids. Remember that, right? Remember those bills and use that. And uh, we had one more animal. There was uh, another F is be fired up about sharing your faith. How many people are like, I want to tell you about Jesus. He's changed my life. He's so much joy. <laughs> and the people are like, what? Are you, did, did you memorize those lines? You know, and we do. We like memorize these lines and stuff and we have to do. You need to be excited. I mean, if you're not excited about Jesus, how are you going to get other people to want to come to Jesus? I mean, Really? We need to be fired up about God. They have these, um, for the kids that are learning the animals, so they can remember this. We had some macaws and some parrots that we showed some video of. The macaws and these parrots are, I mean, they are wild. They are fired up. Macaws are the loudest birds that I've ever heard. I mean, I don't want to yell here because I'll probably blow your ears on this mic. But these things will scream. You know when they're coming. They usually come at 6 in the morning, at 6 at night to eat to your neighborhood. They'll come up to your window. They'll climb in your window. They'll start breaking stuff to your window to open it on their own, looking for food. These, these things are fired up. I mean, they're, they're excited. They're not afraid. They're, uh, they're bold. They're friendly. They're all these together. The little green ones that are just the normal parrots, we have a lot, ton of those in Venezuela too. They will mock you. They will copy whatever you're saying. They will say it back to you. 
These are crazy animals. They're, they're, just fire. they're like, they get excited. Some people teach them bad words. No, hopefully they just teach them good words. I was walking the church one day. I was uh, helping somebody, and I was walking back to church, and all of a sudden somebody started whistling at me like, I don't know. how. Does that mean something to you in, in the States? Is that, is that a universal whistle or no? That means you're like cute, gorgeous, whatever. Guys use it on the girls, you know, from they whistle at these girls. So this thing, you know, somebody was whistling at me from like 10 floors above, you know. The fo- I was like, and I felt really good. Like, oh, man. <laughs> they really like this shirt, man. I'm glad I wore this shirt to church, you know. And they, it just, they kept whistling at me. I was like almost embarrassed. I, I didn't even want to look up, you know, like I didn't want to lead them on, you know. It's like I'm married. But, um, and it turns out it was this bird. The whole time it was just whistling at me. And they taught them that whistle. And everybody, every time somebody goes by, they whistle at that person like that. And uh, <laughs> so you need to be fired up like the macaws and like these parrots in Venezuela. They're crazy. And for the last one is be firm. Be firm like the turtle. They have this firm. We talked about these turtles and the bills. In the back of one of the bills, there's a turtle. And uh, they're strong. But you know the story about the turtle, right? And the, the rabbit, or you call it something else. I don't know. But uh, the turtle ends up winning the race because he's just steady. He just, he's just persistent. You know, he just, there's these, in Venezuela, they have these turtles that are land turtles. I mean, they're not like water turtles, and uh, they're called morrocois. And uh, they're funny because when they're, they want to go somewhere, and I don't know where it is, I don't know what their plans in life are or whatever, but when they want to go somewhere, I mean, they're very committed to their path. But, but then, like, kids will grab them and, like, put them in the opposite direction, you know, and then they'll do, like, and then they'll go back the same path because that's like the exit or something. They want to escape or whatever. And uh, we do it all the time. We spend all day like putting them in different places and see. And they always come back to the same, same place. They're like determined. They're firm on what they want to do. So when we're sharing our faith with people, we need to be firm, determined. That doesn't mean annoying and, you know, whatever. But it does mean that don't give up. There's a story. Um, I got an email from uh, this girl that used to live in our building in Venezuela 20 years ago. She came to VBS one year because um, a group from the States came and did VBS for us down there. They, they did most of the work, and uh, it was fun. And, uh, and this kid from the building, we invited him. Somebody got points for her being there. And uh, she, came, she came to VBS, and then she came to a few more activities at church, Eventually, she moved away from the building. We didn't hear more about her. She wrote to me. On, she found me on Facebook. She wrote me the other day, and she said, last month I got baptized. 20 years later, and she had like this, I wanted to contact your family and uh, let you know uh, how that VBS impacted me, you know, how that, your life impacted us. And even though I'm only t- making the decision now, me and my husband, my kids, we're going to church now regularly. She lives in in Toronto, Canada, and, uh, and, and this is how it works. Sometimes, like, your boldness and all that stuff, your work, you don't see the fruit immediately. It takes time, even up to 20 years. But once that's planted there, I mean, the right time, the right moment, you know, that's going to grow. We had the week... I said that the week before we came, we had a baptism of Tiffany, Julia's friend. But the week before that, we had the baptism of David. He's, 23 year, he's a 23-year-old college student. And um, i got a funny story because uh, I didn't even remember this. But when, I was, uh, when he came forward and we were taking his confession of faith and everything, his mom reminded us, like, you, don't, you may not remember this because it's a long time ago, 23 years ago, that we dedicated him in this church we brought him forward you guys prayed for him you know to be walking God's way and and then things happened in life and uh the parents got divorced at at one point and the kids stopped lived with his mom they stopped coming to church and uh uh, and even though he started growing up in the church he eventually abandoned the church and he only started coming back like this year uh, 
recently. His parents started talking to him about coming back, and they started coming to our church again. He made the decision and got baptized. You know, 23 years later, you know, but it started in our congregation. It started, you know, with presenting them. So parents, I'm glad you guys brought your kids to VBS. It's amazing what they learned and how their lives are changing, you know. So I'm out of Fs for today. So um, why don't we stand and pray and ask God to make us bold, friendly, first, funny, fired up, and firm like a turtle. Dear God, we just thank you so much for this whole week, the way you've been ministering to the children and how the children have ministered to us, to all the helpers, Lord. And I just pray that they will never forget this week and that they continue to grow and learn more about you. And they, they will also continue to share the faith. And I pray for the parents, everybody here, here Lord, that we will learn how to be more bold, more friendly, um, go fast and first, be funny and fired up and firm, Lord. I pray that we learn to be a better, better at this, Lord, to bring our friends to faith. In your name we pray. Amen. If you liked what you saw here, go ahead and click on that like button. And while you're at it, for more great content, go ahead and subscribe to our channel.